Thank you so much for being here, and thanks for staying till the end. Um, this is the panel on confidence, leadership, and belonging, the Heart of Paul approach. And um, my name is Fran Maddox. I'm the director of counseling, and I also teach ninth grade life balance course. Life balance is our social emotional learning courses that are offered from fifth grade through tenth grade. Um, students are required to take it, but we'd like to think they would choose to take it as well if they had the option. Um, those classes are run by the counselor that is responsible or oversees that grade, so we have a good time to connect and interact and develop a relationship. Um, and I'm delighted to moderate this panel of some of the most amazing faculty and students in the community. So at this point, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, and students, if you would say your name, um, your grade, the school you came from, and an example of your experience at Hubble Hall. But Buffy, you came from this one. You want to start with the students? I'll start with you. Okay, okay. Sounds great, sounds great. I'm Mary Meacham. I'm in 12th grade. Um, I came to Harvard Hall in fifth grade from Ensworth. Um, I'm originally from New York, so I went to Ensworth for two years, but I went to Brearley before that in New York, so I'm a big, big promoter of all girls' schools. Um, Harvard Hall especially. I, especially here today, I am a part of the Confidence Committee, which is my favorite club on campus, maybe paired with the Ambassador Program, which is who you're seeing here giving the tours today. Um, and I love any chance I get to talk about the school, so I'm excited to be here. Hi, I'm Mary Mika Forster Camp. I'm in the 10th grade. I came in eighth grade from um, MLK uh, High School, but it had a middle school connected to it. So, um, and I would say one of my best experiences at Harper Hall was um, the eighth grade speech that I had to do because it helped build my confidence in public speaking and jump started my desire to be in front of an audience. So I'm, gra I'm grateful to be able to talk to all of you today. Hi, I'm Jessica Wang. I'm in ninth grade and I came in eighth grade, so last year. Um, I originally went to Brentwood Middle School, which is a co-ed school, and I just wanted to come to Harvard Hall to try an all-girls school because I thought it would be something really special in the community, which it is. And um, also the motive of being like a leader and being confident, I really wanted to explore the, those things and get opportunities like this one to be able to practice talking in front of a crowd and exercising my leadership. Hi, I'm Marquis Chappelle, so I'm in my, in my fifth year here at Harvard Hall, and so I've served in a number of roles, so upper school English teacher, ninth grade dean, and now director of equity and inclusion, and um, upper school English teacher. Oh, and I love Harvard Hall because we have amazing students here, um, and that is not me being pleasant, they actually are amazing. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Buffy Baker, and I came to Harvard Hall, did in seventh grade, and that was a decision by my parents at the time. And I know that you might be making decisions for your children. Um, I was not as much a part of that decision making, and I'm back. So it was a wonderful decision by my parents. I love working here. I'm a uh, wellness teacher. I'm a coach, and I would say one of my favorite things about Harvard Hall is community. I have a wonderful place to show up every morning. And a friend of mine said one time, if you love going to work, then it's not work. And Jess Hill is in the room, so I'm so glad that I said that. <laughs> that was here. Oh, great, thank you. And Buffy, since you have the mic, would you talk a little bit about your work with the confidence team? Okay, I love talking about this. This is confidence work. And I was one of the original, along with Jess Hill, of starting talk about confidence at Harvard Hall. And it was over 10 years ago. It's really a call to action. We had a senior doing her senior speech and talking about advancements that women had made in the world. And she had gone through a litany of different things and then said, yet women are still making 
73 cents to the dollar a male. They are more than 50% of US population, but at the time represented less than 30% of Congress. So she kind of all of a sudden started giving these stats and there was a pause by some teachers of, are we doing enough with our students to give them the tools and the skills to develop their competence? And so we started to do some research and talk and there was a quote by Carol DeWeck who wrote the book Mindset. And she said, if life were one long grade school, girls would rule the world. Girls do school very well. We see it every day here. What happens beyond that was really what we felt the senior was speaking to. So we thought, let's, let's look at our population and see how we could help in their development of confidence. So we, we came up with five inhibitors that we felt got in the way of confidence. And they are, so Jess, you did steal my thunder this morning. I'm gonna bring this sign back out because you've seen it now twice. Uh, perfectionism was one. Fear of failure, sensitivity to criticism, negative self-talk, and comparison. Which comparison, when we, we did this talk with all, all grades, this was years ago, and we had them vote, which inhibitor do you struggle with most? What do you think the number one inhibitor was? Every single freshman through seniors. Comparison. Yeah. So we, we've taken this on the road. We've talked at uh, national uh, educational conferences. We've talked to alum. We've talked to parents. We've talked to students. And we were given some advice along the way. This was probably three, four years ago of what now? How do we keep this message alive and how do we keep developing our students' skills? And we were, a suggestion to us was, you've got to get this into the students' hands. Let them be your voice. Let them teach the younger ones. So we started the Confidence Club a couple years ago and that has really kind of been our, how we're spreading the word on campus. So I would like to introduce Mary Meacham here, who introduced herself, but she is part of Confidence Club and is going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing on campus. So Confidence Club is, I mean, just at the surface level, so fun. Um, I joined it last year. Um, I was feeling as though I needed to take my confidence into my own hands a little more, I think, is the original reason I joined. Um, I was struggling, especially with perfectionism. That's my main inhibitor. Um, when I was a freshman, I heard the talk and we got these wristbands that you see here and we sort of got to choose which inhibitor we felt mainly um, encapsulated our struggles with confidence and mine was perfectionism. And at the beginning of junior year, I really said, well, I want to do something about that more seriously. So I joined Confidence Club. Um, and just from the beginning, we started working, or we continued working with the student body, um, doing confidence, a confidence day we did last year, confidence weeks have been done in the past, um, just trying to get the word out to the student body in ways that are engaging. I mean, all the students in the room know it's always more fun to be doing something than hearing about it, I think. So we really tried to bring that to students in the way that we would want it told to us. Um, so we've been doing that through Confidence Day. We had a dance party in the senior patio, just bring your most confident self, um, which is a good message, I think. You don't always think, am I putting my, confident, my most confident self out there? So to say that and say, let's all bring our most confident selves and then see girls coming out and just forgetting the stresses of the day and being able to dance to music with their friends. I mean, that's just that in itself is a powerful image. Um, and then aside from that, we tried to expand more into the community. So if we have any Percy Priest students who do Girls on the Run, we went to see your program a few weeks ago. Um, and we talked with the girls. This is a program of elementary school girls who <coughs> go on runs, they run around their track every day or every week. And at the beginning they have a lesson, so we took and did that lesson that day and we spent time talking about 
the inhibitors and also talking about our own experiences with them. And then we taught them power poses. So if anyone knows what a power pose is, this is very important. Um, you stand up before you take a test, you take a quiz, you have a meeting um, for the parents. Um, and you make yourself as big as possible. So you put your hands on your hips, you do a superhero pose. And studies show that that truly does make you more confident. It puts your superhero self out there. So we talked about that. And then as the girls ran their laps, we made sure that at the end of each lap, they did their power pose. And it was really special to see how girls at the beginning of the run were a bit more nervous to do their power pose or just thought, oh, maybe this isn't what is going to help me. And then by the end, I mean, we had girls doing the splits. They were doing the worm. <laughs> just, I mean, even in a 20 minute hour long span, you see them growing in confidence. And so that's what we are hoping to see, not just in Harpeth Hall, but around the community. And now, my claim to fame, very confident on TikTok is my username for the Confidence Club. I'm the social media manager. Um, and this started just as something fun, but we were just talking about this before. It's reached over 5,000 people online, and it's just videos either of people dancing, putting their most confident selves out, or there's some videos of, I did a Girls on the Run, so we showed what we were doing to make sure that people knew what the inhibitors were and some ways that you can combat them. and. Then my favorite one is asking girls around school just what makes them feel the most confident. And you got an array of answers. My friends, when I win a race at track, my uniform, when my teacher tells me that I can do this. Um, and it's just so authentic what they're saying. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's really amazing. Let's just watch. TikToks. <laughs> when Millie really gives me compliments. Oh, uh, when people lift me up. Yeah. My sister. My best friend, Mary Pizza. <laughs> when I come home from school and my dog's happy to see me. When I win a race at track. <laughs> Wearing comfortable clothes. <laughs> my teammates make me confident. My friend. My friend Mary. Yeah. Very confident. Um, when I'm with my friends. So thank you. But yes, I mean, it's fun and it's silly, but at the same time, I have an eighth grade sister whose friends come up to me and say, I didn't know that perfectionism was an inhibitor to confidence, and now I do. So we're just trying to get the word out there and having a good time doing it, which is important. Thank you so much. And Marquis, would you do us the pleasure of sharing a little bit about your program? <laughs> All right, so as Director of Equity and Inclusion, the, the first thing we want to do at Harvard Hall is clarify what that means. So when you go, every different community has a different conceptualization of what diversity, equity, inclusion means. And so diversity expands beyond race. So that's not just black and white. So thinking about class, thinking about gender, thinking about neurodiversity, so on and so forth. Um, the equity piece for the question of access. And so when we think about our program, so Winston program and all the field trips that we have, are we creating opportunities for students who may not be able to afford those programs to access them? And then we think about inclusion and the belonging that's on a continuum. And so what we want with the DEI work is the reason it's particularly important to schools is when we think about the social and politically polarized world in which we are navigating and our students are navigating and this call out culture, we want to give our students the tools, the tools to move away from call out culture to call in culture. And so instead of counseling each other, how are we navigating conversations? How are you speaking with the person who you may disagree with? And so navigating difference, navigating um, how are we living in community? And so what we want for our diversity, equity, and inclusion work is for that to be student-led. And so in the middle school, there's a group called Better Together that is totally voluntary. And so the girls who do Better Together, they meet during lunch and recess once um, every two weeks. And so they design programming for the middle school. And so they recently did a program based on the question of kindness. And so when given the choice to be right or be kind, how are we choosing kindness? And so they left that using some videos from the Disney movie Encanto in the middle school. Um, and in the upper school, our students, they, they are a lot more, um, as you can imagine, independent. And so they do a lot of 
campus programming. So right now they're planning the Spring Harvard Hall International Film Festival, which will be open to the community. Um, and so those two groups lead the work. And so when I think about DEI, I often characterize this aspect of my job as the coach. And so really just supporting the students and leading the work that they would like to, um, of which they'd like to be a part. for questions. Um, what questions do you have about any of these programs, about leadership, confidence, um, and belonging at Harvard Hall? Or about the student's experience? Okay, well students, maybe you could speak, would you mind speaking a little bit about maybe um, those, thinking those three words in your mind, the title of this panel, um, confidence, leadership, and belonging, and maybe about your experience in Harvard Hall and what those what that means to you. Um, well, focusing on the word belonging, I came to Harvard Hall in eighth grade, which is kind of a weird year to come in because everyone's have already got their own friends, and you're kind of just you kind of just feel stuck. You don't know where to go. Um, but Harvard Hall, unlike from other schools that I've been here to, Harvard Hall is very inc inclusive. And when I first came into Harvard Hall, all the girls welcomed me with open arms. I had maybe like <laughs> 10 friends in my first day. Um, and it, the friend group, there's no like cliques, you know? I think everyone, everyone is friends, everyone's family. You can go up to anyone and ask a question. There's no, you know, drama or anything. Um, so Harvard, Harvard Hall really, you know, eliminates blocking. Um, I think that the confidence, leadership, and belonging here at Harvard Hall all kind of just go together. <coughs> Sorry. Um, because I remember the very first time I met all the girls, which was last year in, during the summer, right before eighth grade started. Um, there was a beginning of the year party, which was at Defy, and I just remember all the girls like surrounding me, and they wanted to introduce themselves, and they were all so excited, and I really noticed how confident and outgoing they are, and so that, I was like a really shy person, and I was definitely not someone to just go out and introduce myself, so I felt like being around girls with that kind of personality really pushed me and made me want to strive to be more, I guess, take more opportunities to be able to make others feel more welcome. And so that was just the big part of like what I really noticed first when coming to Harvard Hall. And then also um, just now whenever I walk around, I never feel judged because I feel like maybe I don't talk to these girls every single day, but since I've just known them for only a year, I just feel so com comfortable and in class when I want to voice my opinion, I'm never really hesitant to say what I'm feeling or say what I think, because I know I'll be supported, and that's something that I really appreciate. I agree with everything. Um, but on the other end of the spectrum, I would say I'm a senior, so I'm just beginning the process of looking outside of Harvard Hall for the first time in eight years, which is terrifying and crazy. Um, and I feel old, <laughs> but um, Harvard Hall has been such a unique experience in preparing me for the things that I've had to do thus far in my college search. Um, and I feel prepared to enter into the world, not just because of the academics I've received, which clearly I, I already know I'll be a step ahead, but in my conversational abilities, I had a college interview two weeks ago, and I wasn't sweating, I wasn't worried, I was just comfortable going in knowing I have this background, I have the background knowledge I need to succeed in this, not just because I'm prepared with my knowledge, but I'm prepared in my confidence. I know how to speak to this person, not just as someone interviewing me, but I can make this a person that I know, I can make this a person a friend, because that's what I have here. I have the chance to converse with people on every level and speak with them in different ways. 
um, and the confidence to go into an experience that is scary, should be scary, but feel that I have the ability to do it and do it well. Um, and that is the leadership, that's the confidence, and I think that's the belonging because I know that I can not only make myself feel as though I belong with this other person and with the people and with the place I go wherever it is next year, um, but I also know that I have the ability and the skills to build community around me um, because that's what I've had the ability to do here and had friends building around me, supporting me, I've been able to support them. And I think Harvard Fall is pushing us to do that and teaching us to do it in our everyday lives. Thanks, Leanne, for all three of you. We have a few more minutes. I want to just do another temperature check, see if there are any questions that you might have for anyone on this panel. Yes. Well, for one, I lean on my friends a lot. I think comparison can be hard because there's sometimes the idea that these are my friends, these are my classmates. If she got a 90, but I got an 89, oh no. Um, but I think that an important thing is, obviously Harvard Hall can teach you not to do that and encourage you not to do that, but at the same time, you yourself have to tell yourself that you don't want to do that. Um, which can be hard, and it's hard, and no one, no one is perfect. <laughs> um, so understanding that, and maybe that feels as though that's just something you're telling yourself, but at the same time, I think if you tell yourself that enough, that it helps. And at the same time, celebrating when you mess up, um, pushing yourself to do things even if you know that it might not end in success, with school that often for me has been taking challenging classes that I don't necessarily think I can succeed in. If I have a baseline that I expect myself to hold myself to, um, I'm not always going to meet it. And you're not supposed to, and that's, Harbenthal does a great job. I've had, I had a teacher, I always told myself I wasn't a STEM person, which you're not supposed to be. Um, and I had a teacher sophomore year who sat me down at the end of the year with course selections. And she said, you could take this one path. She was my chemistry teacher. Um, you could take this one path, and you'll do well. You'll get the grade you want, and you'll, you'll be pushed, but you won't be pushed as hard as you could be on this other path. Um, and I took the other path just because, at the time, I think it was because no one had ever told me that I could. I hadn't ever been pushed in the way saying, maybe you don't feel like you're a STEM person, but you could be, and you could grow to that. I didn't think, I had a set mindset. You're supposed to have a growth mindset. <laughs> you can have a growth mindset. Um, and she helped push me to that, and I took AP chemistry. It doesn't matter what the class is, but whatever that push is, even if it's taking a club or running for a leadership position. Um, and I didn't do perfectly. I didn't do as well as I wanted to on every test, but I continued down the path because I learned to study in ways I'd never known I could. I learned to ask for help when I needed it from my teachers and my friends. I learned to rely on other people more than just myself. Um, and I learned Gibbs free energy is the sum of Delta H. <laughs> um, and it's really helped me and it's, I mean, I'll probably do well in freshman chemistry next year. Um, and it just taught me that you can't be perfect, so why try? If that, and just tell yourself, make a power pose before too, and you'll probably get a sticker when you're done. <laughs> well, one, one thing we also, we give our students things they can say. So comparison is a thief of joy. And I, most students here know that phrase. We compare as adults. Um, and it's a great reminder, when we say it, I hear it myself. The uh, fear of failure I have here on my computer, you can't, you may not be able to see at the bottom, fail forward. You know, I, I don't, I don't want it, I'm not good. Okay, how often have you tried this? You know, I get that a lot in my class. And 
just the other day, I had a student, we went and ran the mile, and they were so excited. I'm kidding. These are high schoolers. <laughs> they, they threw everything out. You know, I said, that's fine. Just tell me. Get it all out. Get it all out. I'm going to be last. And this girl, particular girl, ran cross country, and I said, you ran cross country. Yeah, and I was always the last. And um, I said, well, then, all right, you've been the last, you're used to it. She's a senior. Uh -huh. I've, I've taught her for many years, so I knew that I could say something like this to her. So we went and ran the mile, and I said, were you last? No. And I said, are you last in your academic classes? No. I said, are there students in your class that work so hard to do well, that don't do as well as you? Yes. And I said, you know what? You just stepped into the shoes of some other students who worked so daggone hard to make a C plus. And she said, you know, I almost quit cross country this year. She's done it. She did it for four years. And she's a senior. She goes, I came this close. And she goes, I realize there is value in being one of the worst. And she would not have ever said that as a freshman, sophomore, junior. I was shocked she said as a senior. And she saw value in that. Correct. We have to help, yes, the, the growth with that. And she stuck with it. And I said, I know when I said that, that probably really burned you up. She's like, I say it though. And so we talk, you know, there's, there's up moments, what I'm getting to is, it comes out all the time. And as teachers, we are trying to curb them and not say I'm immune to it, because I'm not, I, I deal with all of these. And so that's the beauty in, I think, the work we're doing is, God, I wish this was at Harper Hall when I was here. And I just want to build on that, Buffy. I, one, I want to echo everything Buffy said, but the research is clear that when you are teaching students, particularly girls at a high performing school such as Harpeth Hall, they are a lot more prone to these, to giving in to these inhibitors. And so from a curricular and pedagogical standpoint, us as the faculty have to be clear in the way we structure the curriculum, the way we structure courses, the way we structure feedback to ensure that girls are able to confront these inhibitors and, and progress forward. For example, so traditional models for giving students feedback, a student submits a paper, a math test to you, you mark the things that are incorrect, you give that back to the student. Great, so that's been the traditional model. But if we're thinking about helping students confront these inhibitors, that feedback should look a lot more balanced. So yes, mark all the, in, the things that they did incorrectly and mark the things they did well. So the student should walk away from the feedback with a clear idea of areas of growth and particular areas of success. I love that. And the last thing I'll say to respond to your question, she is we incorporate several strategies into the life balance curriculum that line up with kind of counterbalancing these inhibitors. So for example, in life balance in ninth grade, we just discussed automatic thoughts in ways to challenge, in a way to look for the evidence in those and um, kind of to flip them around with genuine but maybe positive solution focused way. That's just one example. Um, okay, we're a little past time. I apologize. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, everyone on the panel as well. Thank you.